Hello everyone, today we are going to learn how to convert this into this with just one line of code. Here are some examples of when stacking can be really helpful. So in a project where you have a long pipeline and you want to see the iteration of each uh, image, it is very useful to have uh, stacked images together. And here is another example in which you can see the workflow of the project. So conventionally, we can do this by using matplotlib and we can plot different images together. But the problem with that is with images, it is fine. But when it comes to video or when it comes to webcam stream, it is really, really slow. You will not get a decent amount of frame rate. So for that, I have created a function that will allow you to stack images together and stack webcam feed together. First, we will have a look at the conventional NumPy library in which we have the stacking function. And then we will have a look at uh, the function I have created and we will see how it simplifies this process. So let's get started. Since images are just matrices we can use the numpy library which is a matrix library to actually stack them together numpy has a function called horizontal stack that allows us to stack two matrices together for example if we had this as the image one and this has the image two our output will be the combination of these two images in the horizontal direction similarly numpy also has a vertical stacking function which will stack two images vertically. So here we have a code that displays this functionality. So we are reading two images and then we are scaling them out. The reason for this is that if they are uh, to actual scale, they might go out of the screen. And then we are using the horizontal stack and the vertical stack function in the NumPy library to actually join them together. So if we run this, we should be able to see two images, one horizontally stacked and one vertically stacked. Now, if we see in the printout, we can see that both of the images, the printout is from here for image one and image two, both of the images are of the same size and of the same number of channels. Now, this is fairly important because uh, horizontal stacking or vertical stacking will not work if one of the images had one channel and the other had three. For example, if we change this to zero, it will import it as a grayscale image. And then we will get an error that we cannot perform this function. For this, we will have to add a function which converts this gray image into BGR, which is OpenCV's convention. So if we run this now, now it should convert it into grayscale and stack them together. So if we are using a couple of images, this is fine. It is a few lines of code and it is not that hard to manage. But if you remember in the basic function video, we had five images, actually six images that we were displaying uh, as I am show. So if we run this, let's let's have a look at that. If we run this, we have six different images and we are unable to organize them uh, in a timely manner. So what we need to do is we need to stack them together. But if we use the functionality we just saw, it requires us to scale each image and then it requires us to see if it's gray or uh, colored and then convert it. And then it requires us to stack it horizontally. And then if we want multiple uh, rows, we will have to stack them uh, vertically as well. So if we hard code this, it means if we write line by line, this is what it will look like. So this is a lot of uh, different lines of code and just to display an image, it seems quite a lot. So we have these six images that we are scaling, and then we are checking if, uh, if they are uh, gray, we convert them into BGR, and then we are stacking them together. And at the end of the day, we are getting one output as 
our stacked images so if we run this it should work but it is not the most efficient way to run it so what can be a better way a better way can be a generic function that we input a value in uh, in terms of images and it gives us one clean image uh, as the output with all the images stacked together based on our um, what do you call uh, orientations so what I have done is I have written a function that will allow us to do that. So all you need to know is how to utilize that function, how to use it in order to take advantage of it. So we can create a new file. Let's create a new file and we will call it stacking images test. And here we will include our basic functions. now we are going to import our function that we created for stacking now this function is a bit long uh, because it is quite generic and it will take uh, it can take a lot of inputs so it seems quite a bit but i will show you an easier way to manage this as well so first we will learn how to actually run it so our function is called stack images and it inputs uh, scale the parameter of scale and it inputs uh, an array of images so uh, if we want to have vertical or horizontal stacking we can define it here so let's see how we can use this so let's say we want to stack image and image gray so let's start with something simple. So we will say stacked, stacked images is equals to stack images. And then we will input our scale value. Let's say we will input 0 0.8. And then we have to define our image array. So inside our image array, we are going to add our image and then image gray so in the first example i am only going to stack it horizontally so i will hide all of these i will comment them out and then i will copy this and stack images and we will print out our stacked images so if we run this now as you can see we only had to write one line of code to stack two images which were of uh, different color spaces. So if we want to add more images, we can simply write in front of it. For example, image blur, we can write it up here. And if we run it now, it will add the image blur as well. But what if we want to do it vertically as well? so in that case we need to add a comma and then we can write in the rest of the images so for example image canny image dilation and then image eroded so if we run this now you will see all of these images have been stacked properly but what if you have only five images and you don't want to add anything here you want it blank in that case you can create a blank image so we can create blank let's call it image blank and p dot zeros and then we can say that it is you can uh, you can give it dimensions of any size because this function uh, it takes the size of the first image and it forces all the images to be of the same size so you don't have to worry about uh, the size of each image np dot unsigned integer integer of 8 bits 
So I can just replace my last image with the image blank and I can run it. So now my image at the last place is blank. Now this demonstration was good for images, but what we really want to see is how it performs with the webcam. So let's import our webcam code from our images and webcam video. So I will paste it here and we will comment it out. We don't need the import. We can use this and then we need all of this at the end and all we need to do is we need to push all of this inside the loop so this actually added our webcam now we need to refer our webcam image into our main pipeline so we will remove the im read so we will remove this and now it should automatically detect our webcam. So let me see if I have connected it. So let's run this. And there you see my webcam feed. Uh, the last image is blank. Let's remove that and put the eroded image. And let's play with the scale. Let's make it 0 0.5 to make it easier to see. So here you can see with the webcam, uh, you can see I can easily move around. I, uh, the frame rate is decent and I can still see all of the images stacked together in a nice manner. Now let's, let's get a little bit crazy and let's see what we can do further with this. Let's say I want to add more and more. So let's do that. We added six in one row and then six in another. And then we can add multiple rows. Oops. So let's see how this performs but we need to scale it down so we can actually see it and there you go so even at this point it is able to move around uh, with a decent frame rate and it is working fine and of course with just one change of number we can scale it up and we can scale it down Uh, so the maximum I have tried uh, is 500 images. I know it's crazy, but uh, it did work with uh, 500 different images coming uh, live from my webcam and it still ran. Um, it really heated up my PC, but still it worked. So this was the demonstration of how you can use this function. But now, uh, as you can see, the code has become uh, quite, quite a bit lengthy so what we can do is we can shift this function into another code another file and we can call it from there so what we can do is we can create a utilities file I can say my utilities and we can call this we can bring our function we can take that function and we can bring it here now, whatever libraries are missing, you have to import them. So we will take NumPy and import CV2. We'll put them here. And now you can see, you will get an error at this point where it says stack images because there is no more function called stack images where in fact it is in my utilities. So we need to write here my utilities dot and here we need to import import my utilis now if it's in the main directory you can directly import it like this if it's in for example other or resources then you have to say from let's say other import my utilis something like that 
So once we have done that, now our code is very small, you can see, and uh, it's quite a bit tidy. And it, it seems manageable now. So if I run it again, it should run exactly the same as before. And you can see it runs exactly the same. So I hope uh, this function helps you out because uh, in, in small or big projects, whenever you want to see the output of your pipeline or your workflow, it is very useful to see it uh, iteratively one by one and uh, it's easier to debug this way. So that's it for today. Uh, I will have the code in the description, the function and all the details and I will see you in the next video.